Sophie Ackoff from the National Young Farmers Coalition. Uh, Sophie's here to tell us a little bit about the coalition. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. So we are a grassroots coalition of young and beginning farmers all across the country, organizing for our collective success. Uh, we started in the Hudson Valley just four years ago. A group of farmers came together and realized that the obstacles they were facing starting their farming careers were shared by other farmers in the valley and farmers all across the country. So a national coalition was needed to sort of leverage the voice of all young farmers to make it easier to start a farm in the U.S. Great, great. And can you talk about what some of those obstacles might be, um, what they still are, or what has been resolved since then? Yeah, so we did a survey of a thousand beginning farmers uh, a couple years ago, and we found, not really surprisingly, that the biggest challenges are access to land, capital, uh, and training, and credit. So those are the four um, target areas that we target the most, um, and we put together a policy platform from that um, that we wrote with the National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition. Great. It's called the Beginning Farmer and Rancher Opportunity Act, and we worked with representatives um, in Congress to put that into the Farm Bill. Um, so it was a long process, um, but we got bipartisan support on the act, and it's, it's a marker bill, so it has provisions that when included in the Farm Bill will help beginning farmers. So wow, the Farm Bill key. just passed, and mm -hmm. it was sort of a normal Farm Bill. It kept a lot of the same subsidy and right. direct payment programs, but beginning farmers are really supported in this Farm Bill, thanks to our coalition that is sort of rallying farmers to make change. Great, great. So uh, what are some of the benefits for new farmers who want to join the coalition? Uh, what benefits will they feel from joining the coalition? And yeah. maybe talk a little bit about the coalition in Vermont. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we are a member-driven coalition. So we have uh, 23,000 supporters um, and almost 1,000 dues-paying members. And with membership, uh, you get representation in DC. So we're there advocating for young farmers uh, when you're busy toiling away on your farm. Um, and we also can help you launch a Young Farmer Coalition in your region. So we have 21 chapters in 20 states right now, including Vermont. Um, and we also have benefits at a lot of ag companies, because um, we know beginning farmers don't have a lot of extra cash lying around. Um, true. It's important to join NYFC, so we make it um, pay for itself. Okay, so as far as membership goes, mm -hmm. what, what do those fees look like? Yeah, so we have sustaining, which is monthly, and it's $3 a month or more. Oh, wow. And then, okay. yeah, and annually it's $20 or more. And you can get 5% off at Johnny's, which if you order a normal amount of seeds can just pay for itself right there. Great, great. And yeah. do you know the percentage of farmers, new farmers, uh, that are organic certified? Um, and yeah. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that and what the benefits are for them um, if they're certified and if they're not certified, why? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so in that survey we did of 1,000 farmers, uh, we asked who's growing organically okay. and we got 82%. Um, so wow. this generation of farmers are really motivated by um, changing their food system and reforming it so that it is good for the planet. Um, and organic certification is a really good way to express that commitment um, and also have a marketing boost. So we are about to come out with a guide to organic certification that really looks at what are the benefits and what are the challenges to certification. Okay. And we found that it's worth the time and money um, to get certified so that you have that marketing edge okay. and commitment that customers are looking for. So it's mostly about uh, morals and ethics and then the marketing that they're benefiting from and uh, as far as wholesaling yeah. goes. Exactly, getting into wholesale markets okay. is really important to have that. And so it sort of outlines um, how to get certified. So it, here's why you should get certified. Great. And then here are the steps to doing it and um, the record keeping necessary. Um, sure. So what do each of your chapters work on? What are some of the main successes that each chapter has had uh, in the coalition? Yeah, so our chapters are local organizing hubs. They bring farmers together to learn and share and build a stronger community where they're farming uh, so they can tackle local challenges, whether that's um, passing through a urban farming, um, you can have chickens, bees, or whether they're uh, working on GMO legislation or working for affordable land access in their community. Um, so they're working on local policy and also on collaborative projects. So we have chapters that are doing um, crop mobs and farm tours, um, really using the collective um, skills of the group to find more success as farmers in the region. 
Um, the Hudson Valley Young Farmers Coalition is a chapter I'm a part of, and one of the, our first projects was to develop a grain buying club okay. for organic grain in the valley. It's really prohibitively expensive. Sure. Um, so we work together to buy in grain. Um, it's actually from Ohio right now. Okay. We share the delivery costs and we get bulk prices. Okay. And so we're it's a co-op. It's a co-op so. exactly. And we're now working with a farmer locally in the Hudson Valley who's at this point growing non-organic grain to transition because he knows that he has that market of sure. farmers to sell to. So. so it sounds like the National Coalition is working on target markets and uh, what um, working on outlets that there are for farmers currently, so growing organic grain. Okay, so do yeah. you, can you talk a little bit about uh, distribution and how mm -hmm. some of the new farmers are distributing their produce um, as far as wholesale and co-ops, um, direct marketing, what are the best ways that some of the new farmers yeah. are finding that they're so, able to get rid of their, sell their produce? Yeah, so this generation also is, is focusing on direct marketing um, because they, you can capture more of the food dollar that way. Right. Um, you get a better price for your food and having organic certification helps because consumers want to see that right. Um, right off the bat. And Knowing their farmer is important, but if you're just walking by and you see one organically certified farm stand, you're probably going to end up there if that's what you're looking yeah. for. Uh, so you mentioned that one of the difficulties was finding affordable land. So new farmers are having difficulties finding, accessing affordable land. Mm -hmm. So um, what is the coalition working on? Now? Yeah, so we've identified that land is prohibitively expensive, especially around major cities, which provide good marketing opportunities for farmers. So this past year, we did a survey of 200 land trusts all across the country, um, because there are some land trusts, like the Vermont Land Trust, a lot of land trusts in Massachusetts and California, who are going further um, in not just conserving land, but making sure that it stays in agriculture okay. and owned by farmers. Um, so that survey, we found that um, I think it's two-thirds of land trusts are seeing farmland that they've conserved go out of production. Okay. And so folks are, um, like wealthy landowners that are buying second homes around cities are buying that land and out-competing, right. uh, outbidding farmers. So what we're going to do moving forward is create a working group of land trusts who are using affordability tools in their easements and land trusts who are not to do some professional development because nice. there's it's not too tricky for land trusts to do it costs a little bit of money and it need they need some training right. um, but if you put an option to purchase at agricultural value in the easement it means that the land can only be sold to a working farmer which means the working farmer can access it much easier because the value of the land is so decreased because no one else can right. purchase it other than farmers. So is this something Vermont Land Trust is currently working mm -hmm. on? So Vermont Land Trust is sort of a champion of affordability right. and easements. So the idea is to get that model brought to scale across right. the United States. And then there's a lot of policy that goes along with that too because right. the national um, government gives a lot of money to land trusts to help them in easements. So we're working with the USDA and NRCS to give more money to land trusts who are targeting beginning farmers and putting affordability measures into their easements. Great, that sounds like a great opportunity for new Vermont farmers and mm -hmm. farmers all over the United States, so yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, just encouraging farmers to be more proactive in finding land trust partners. Right. Um, going into your land trust and saying, I'm interested in buying this land, but I need your help. And right. I think that'll open up a lot more opportunities. And would new farmers be able to access those resources through the coalition if they were a member? Okay. Yeah, well, right. most of our resources are available online okay. um, for free, and so that's youngfarmers.org, and we have that report online, we have the survey of a thousand farmers online, okay. we'll soon have the organic certification guide, awesome. um, but then if you go ahead and join, then you get, um, you get those benefits to the agricultural companies, as well as okay. supporting the organization, Absolutely. and one-on-one -on -one support and starting your own chapter. That sounds like a great opportunity for a very low cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So thank you, Sophie, for yeah, coming in today. Exactly.